I'm uh, Martin Boyce. I studied environmental art at Glasgow School of Art uh, from 1986 to 1990, and I did the MFA programme at Glasgow School of Art from 95 to 97. And during that time, I spent uh, a sort of semester from uh, at Cal Arts in Los Angeles. Well, the show here um, started its life as the, as the Scottish Pavilion uh, for the Venice Biennale. And uh, we went over, we made a number of site visits and found this incredible 15th century palazzo, which has seven interconnecting rooms. And uh, the first pieces really to come out of that were the chandeliers and the leaves. Um, to see the palazzo space in these rooms empty with the windows open and the kind of breeze sort of passing through the space, I, I sort of began to see the these rooms almost like some kind of abandoned garden. They had this, the, the, and the, the grandeur of the building was kind of fading and, and this was kind of interesting. So a lot, a lot of the works refer to a sense of sort of exposure to the elements that, that maybe objects that have been uh, that have come from from outside and been brought in and, and also start to kind of flip between being garden furniture or park furniture to interior furniture. So you start to describe different spaces simultaneously. And then the challenge was how we were going to represent these pieces in Dundee uh, in a, you know quite a classic contemporary art space. And I really didn't know if, I, I just didn't know how that was going to work out at all. Um, the, the, the Palazzo in Venice was so extraordinary uh, and, and the whole context of Venice itself was just, you know, incredible. So, so to go take the work back into a situation that, you know, I'm very familiar with, which is the gallery space, um, I didn't know if it would sort of, I, 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 yeah, I, I wasn't sure, for example, where the chandeliers would go. You know, in, in Venice, there was an obvious place for each chandelier, which was, you know, where the original chandeliers had been. So we had to sort of create a grid and create a logic uh, to allow these to exist in this space. But what is quite nice is that you have this kind of, when you have a group of them, then you have a little, almost like a forest of inverted trees. And and really also the, the, this, the, the because of the expansive space that we have here, uh, it's really allowed, allowed a lot of space around the objects and nice interactions between the objects. And because in Venice we had the, the seven different rooms, it meant um, as you went into each room you had a sense of discovery of each, uh, of each work, whereas one of the things about this space was that, you know, more or less when you walked in, everything would be revealed. And so I wanted to retain some of that sense of things being hidden and, and, and being um, revealed as you moved through the space. So I sort of designed and we built these two coloured walls, um, which are, are sort of loosely based on the architect Carlos Scarpas, uh, some of his museum architecture. He, he was a Venetian modernist architect. So slowly, you know, the, the started to sort of um, articulate the space in a particular way, uh, and as you move around the space, these bright colours are revealed, and uh, some of these, you know, the table is hidden, and the bird box is also hidden when you first enter. But as you move around, these are revealed. So this was one way of kind of dealing with the, um, yeah, the very different spaces. All the works are you know, f are fabricated sculptural objects. There's, there's no, f there are no found objects in the exhibition. Um, but I was really, I was really interested in the work, sort of almost um, adding time to the objects. So a way of doing that was to, was to kind of distress them, to, to, to give them a sense that they had been somewhere else and they, or that they were perhaps made for somewhere else. And also, you know, that sort of allows the viewer and the object to sort of, sim you know, simultaneously be in the same room, but to kind of e exist in different time frames. So, you, you, you know, you, you clearly indoors and you're looking at a table, which could be an interior object, but it's, it's, it's weathered and rusted, you know, the, the legs are rusted. So, you know, that doesn't happen in an inside, in an interior situation. 
and so you have to imagine the object in you know some kind of landscape some exterior place and so it, it creates this sort of temporal shift with the work where you know you're right in front of it but it's also existing somewhere else so that I mean that that process is just, there's different techniques for that we used kind of acids for the um, to, to kind of dull the galvanized steel and also just to rust things, one of the best things to use is vinegar. So we're spraying the objects with vinegar and leaving them outside, and that accelerates the rusting process. So it became a bit like, you know, building up the textures, uh, sort of taking it back and then building up the rust in some places and allowing things to drip and streak. Um, so in a way, it was like, you know, it's like creating, you know, a painting in, in a sense. You know, you've got the objects and then you're building up these textures and colours and shapes. So that was, that was a big part of the production process. Uh, yeah, well, one of the things we did with DCA that's w one of the works that we've introduced, which wasn't in Venice, was the are, are the ventilation grills, and in sort of in the the pattern on the grills is is a repeat pattern of the central structure of the tree, um, and you, with the chandeliers you can see the um, the chandeliers are, are taken from. These concrete trees, the shapes are from these concrete trees from 1925, and the chandeliers are inverted versions of these trees. Um, so within the within the ventilation grills, you can kind of see these little trees repeated. So it sort of creates almost like a sort of graphic linear forest. And I was interested in in Venice, we could have the windows open and we could allow um, the air to sort of to have the sense of kind of air moving through the space. Uh, in a very different space here, I wanted to sort of notionally introduce that, so the, the ventilation grills were a way of doing that. And within the pattern that's on the grills, uh, when I was developing that pattern, I began to see letters of the alphabet sort of bitten into it. And when you isolate certain lines, you can find letters of the alphabet. And so I started to take them out, and they've become uh, the sort of typography that I invented. Uh, and you know each letter kind of appears on the wall where it would be found within the pattern. So some letters are upside down, some letters are on their side. And in this case, there's a text piece which uh, spells out petrified songs. 